Good morning. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Welcome to worship here at Hope Presbyterian Church, where we invite all to worship God, to grow in faith, and to follow Jesus by serving others. My name is Josh. I am the pastor here at the church. And on behalf of our elders, our deacons, and our staff, we welcome you and we are delighted to have you worshiping with us this morning. We would invite those who are here present in attendance to sign your uh, name and our registry of attendance. Those are the little navy blue pads that are inside of the uh, pews there. If you'd put your name and contact information and uh, anything else you'd like to share with us. If you're seated on a pew with someone, pass it down to them. And after worship, when the time is right and appropriate and safe, um, extend a hand of welcome and fellowship to each other. For those of you who are worshiping with us uh, from afar via online, we would invite you to go to hopeaustin.org slash bulletin. And there you will find an online copy of the bulletin as well as our announcements and various forms, the connect form, the prayer request form, and our donation request form. We are glad that you have joined us wherever you may be. Today in the life of our church is called All Saints Day. This is the time of the year when we remember the names of those who have died in the past 12 months. And uh, we are being led in worship today by members of our Hope uh, Memorial Garden Committee. Just outside of the sanctuary, we have a memorial garden where members of our community have died, have had their ashes cremated and interred in the garden, as well as a memorial wall that is out there. And we will be concluding today's worship service outside. So uh, after the final hymn, I'll offer our charge and benediction, and then we will recess out through the side doors uh, on either side and head on out to the memorial garden and we'll finish our, our worship uh, out there. And so you will also get an opportunity to meet some of the members of the Hope Memorial Garden um, uh, out there. So we look forward to that. Today we will be having communion and uh, if you are worshiping at home, I would invite you to go and have your elements uh, prepared of, of grape juice or fruit of the vine, whatever that may be, as well as some bread. And join us when we take communion. When we go to take communion later today, everybody will come down the center aisle. So if you're on the sides, you'll go back to the back and then come down the center aisle. Next Sunday is Pledge Dedication Sunday. If uh, the members of our church have uh, received the pledge cards, which are cards that can be turned in in person next week or online through our pledge form, uh, there are uh, extras available and the narthex as well as we made available next Sunday as well. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in it. Let us prepare our heart now to worship God.
Good morning. I'm Diana Petrick, and I am substituting for Steve Walker, who we are gratefully listening to hearing good news about his recovery from surgery. I am currently serving on the personnel committee. As we approach the pledged dedication Sunday on November 14th and commit our financial gifts to support Hope's mission to God's work, I have been asked also to answer the three questions. Where have I seen hope in the last two years? In the last two years, I have witnessed hope in so many ways. Although many can say that the pandemic hasn't brought us together as it could or should have, I have still seen it. My great-granddaughter was born in the height of the pandemic last year. She is happy, healthy, and enjoyed being a little scarecrow, proudly carrying her bucket on Halloween. I do have pictures, just in case somebody would like to see them. The people I have come in contact with have become more courteous, more sensitive to others, and more giving and more compassionate. Have I seen others that are opposite of that? Well, sure, just look down 183, and people driving in their cars, right? Within Hope Church, I have been blessed to be able to worship regularly. When I think back to the online viewing of the first services away from church in Pastor Josh and Pastor Joel's homes, I'm struck by the amount of effort that it must have taken to pull that off and to continue to refine the service week after week. Your love for this church is so evident and we are grateful for it. But that wasn't the only part of worship that I was able to depend upon. The music that Nick and Julie would prepare and perform every week, your devotion to the music ministry and Hope Church are second to none. And I can't tell you what it meant for us to open our front door on that icy morning in February to find a gallon of water after not having running water for so many days. What do I need from Hope? I need my church, my community, to continue to nurture its longtime members as well as to sponsor those that are new to our church now, to continue to encourage spiritual growth, continue with its mission focus. What I saw the evening of the prayer vigil for Vanessa Nevis was not a Presbyterian church opening its doors to those who were mourning. I saw a community church opening its doors to all in love and compassion. How have I answered the call? This year I agreed to serve as an elder again, this time on the personnel committee. I continue to be a committed member of the Stephen Ministry Program. And I look and listen for small ways I can continue to help as part of our Christian community. You've heard several testimonies over the last month. So let me ask you, how would you answer these three questions? Please prayerfully consider your answer as we approach the Pledge Dedication Sunday on November 14th. Let us consider how we will dedicate our financial pledges to the glory of God and to support the ongoing efforts of providing the hope of Christ within our community. And now, Please rise as you are able in body and spirit, and let us join together to the call of worship as printed in your bulletin. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out with a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the lamb. We rejoice for those who have finished their race and are robed in white. We remember them, Shirley Brotherton,
Ward Cook. Mary Grayson. Bob Johnson. John Nifton. Catherine Robertson. Mark Rowe. Alice Skeel. Betsy Stewart. Bob Wooden. The lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. This is our faith. This is our hope. Sisters, brothers, siblings in the family of Christ, let us worship God. God has promised to make of us a new creation, laying to rest the former things, making all things new. Before God and one another, let us confess our sins. Let us pray. Gracious God, so often we look at ourselves, our gifts, and our talents, and wonder what you would do with these offerings. We don't think that we have much to give. So far too many things, we belittle the gifts and turn our backs on the needs and opportunities present to serve, believing that our gifts cannot possibly make a difference. 
We think that we must possess the greatest of talents and wealth in order to truly please and serve you. How foolish we are. Forgive us when we stop listening to your healing and comforting words and focus on our anxieties. Heal us, O Lord. Forgive us, merciful God. We continue. Forgive us, merciful God. Help us know that you have given to us such blessings and that these blessings are truly wonderful and meant to bring joy and service to others. Help us to bring our lives, just as they are, to you and to receive your gentle touch and healing grace. For this, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the sound of love poured out. Beloved, the Lord is loving, merciful, and just. Therefore, we are reconciled to God and to one another, that we might walk in peace and love. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. your Christian brothers and sisters and pass the peace of Christ. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us exchange the signs of peace. I would invite children of all ages who feel like they would like to come and visit us. Children of any age are welcome to the children's, there we go. Yes, children of any age. See, courage takes all kinds of ages. Oh, yes. Well, good, good morning, boys and girls. And good morning to you. And we welcome those who are watching at Absolutely. home as well. I'm, I'm speaking to everyone. You come sit right there. This Pat. is your child. Good. Good. All right. Here we go. Well, today, boys and girls, we are celebrating a day called All Saints Sunday. And All Saints Sunday is the day that we pay respect to the people who have died during the last year. And I just want you all to know that we are all saints. I know sometimes people question that I might be a saint, but all of you are saints. Anyway, we are all trying to do what Jesus wants us to do, and we try to do what the Bible tells us to do. So you know what that makes us? That makes each of us a saint. And during the year, as we know from our bulletin, that we have had many of our friends and neighbors and family members that have passed away this year. And it is a time for us to pay respect to them and certainly remember their memories and the love that they shared with Hope and with all the people of this community. And so each of us are saints. Isn't that a thought you've never maybe thought about? Did you think of yourself, Josh, as a saint ever? 
<laughs> I won't go further than that. But anyway, Don't ask my family. We are, we are all proud to be called saints, and it is an honor for us to be here today to witness all of the saints that have gone before us and all of us that are around us today. And Emily will close us with a prayer. Would you join me in prayer? Please put your hands together. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Just as I am. Just as I am. Thank you for your saints. Thank you for your saints. Whose lives have touched my life. Whose lives have touched my life. Help me to grow. Help me to grow. In your love. In your love. And be one of your saints. And be one of your saints. In your beautiful world. In your beautiful world. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Emily and Sarah, for the children's time. And I would encourage all of us to go home today and look in the mirror. And when you look in the mirror, to see and believe that you are one of the saints. That may be hard to accept sometimes. Sometimes what we see is... is Maybe the imperfections, maybe the things that we would, that would cause wounds to our vanity. But look in the mirror the way that God sees you. And see the saint that God has claimed, that God loves. And believe in the promise that one day we too will be reunited with all the saints. We began a sermon series last week called More Than Enough. And... And we talked a little bit about the idea of this scarcity mindset versus an abundance mindset. That far too often that, that we live with that FOMO, the fear of missing out or, or, or doomsday scenario. And, and we start to begin hoarding for ourselves and, because we feel like everything is going to run out on us. So, so what the gospel teaches us and we're making our way through the Gospel of Mark, is that, friends, believe. We have more than enough to give and to share. We have more than enough. Last week, we learned about to love. We have more than enough this week to give, more than enough to know, and more than enough to live. With more than enough to love with our whole heart, with our whole mind, our whole soul, and our whole strength, there is not a, a, a finite amount of love within the resources that we have to share. We are made in the image of God. And as those who are made in the image of God, and we know that God is a God of love, if we are made in that image of love, we have more than enough love to share and to, to, to give. And today, more than enough to give in faith and in wisdom. 
And that is referring to our financial resources. More than enough to give financially in faith and in wisdom. Our second passage today is from the Gospel of Mark. Our second package. Our only passage today is from the Gospel of Mark. This is chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. And normally I read out of the New Revised Standard Version. And the lesson therein, which is what is in your pews today, in the red books, if you want to follow along, is good. And, um, but today I specifically want to read from Eugene Peterson's paraphrasing called The Message. Uh, because I believe the wording is a bit more contemporary for us to have access to the point that the gospel writer is making to us this day. Hear now the word of God. Jesus continued teaching, and he said, Watch out for the religion scholars. Oh, boy. They love to walk around in their academic go gowns. Oh, boy. Preening in the radiance of public flattery. Basking in prominent positions. Well, here's a pulpit. It's just my size. Sitting at the head of the table at every church function, oh boy. And all the time they are exploiting the weak and the helpless. The longer their prayers, the worse they get. Oh man. Jesus says, but they'll pay for it in the end. Now sitting across from the offering box, Jesus was observing how the crowd tossed money in for the collection. Many of the rich were making large contributions. All right. One poor widow came up and put in two small coins, a measly two cents. Jesus called his disciples over and said, The truth is that this poor widow gave more to the collection than all the others put together. All the others gave what they'll never miss. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light into our path. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. And in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our receiver, Come, Holy Spirit, and help us to engage your lessons in faith and in wisdom. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Two paragraphs inside of Mark 12 present with us two lessons. And they're in two different locations. The first lesson uh, is inside the temple. Now, I'm going to pretend this is the temple and don't hold it against the fine choir that is here. Uh, The first lesson was inside the temple, and Jesus is specifically talking to the religious leaders and the disciples who are there with them. That's lesson one. Lesson two in that second paragraph where the collection box is, is outside of the temple. He is no longer talking to the religious scholars. He is now talking just specifically with his disciples. Either way, he's stirring it up as Jesus knows to do. In the first lesson, he's talking about these religious scholars, these religious leaders who are dressed to impress. They are playing the part of righteousness and charity and hospitality all the while while financially and spiritually injuring the people they are entrusted to care and to steward and to love And to be a reflection of God's love, they are predators. And predatory practices are things that we see in this world all the time. Jesus was seeing the predatory actions of the religious leaders in in the temple. I was on a vacation, believe it or not, you know, people vacationing. I was on a vacation a few years ago. I've almost forgotten what that's like. 
And we decided on our road trip to stop off in uh, Bossier City, Shreveport, Louisiana. I've never stopped there before, but there was a casino. And I said, hey, that sounds like a fun place to stop. Not that I gamble, but it's better than the Motel 6. And I went walking through the casino because I hadn't been in one in forever. And, and there was an older woman sitting there at the slot machine, all dressed to the nines, nicer than I've seen anybody at church before. And the employees of the casino, they were lavishing her with drinks and love and praise. And, oh, Mrs. Smith, we're so glad to have you here. We have this nice velvet-covered stool for you. And she just click, 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 kept pulling that arm of the slot machine. They praised her and loved her and lavished on her and showed her hospitality all the while being the recipients of the money that she was spending. You remember in the early 2000s, we had this problem with uh, adjustable rate mortgages and subprime lending. And, and the banks, they would love to have folks come and apply. And you know what? You young person, they said to Josh and Wendy, you've got about $35,000 in college debt. You're not making a whole lot of money, but you can afford a really fancy house. And here's how. And we would love to give you that loan. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. We'll get you this lower entry level rate right now. And I'm sure that by three years from now when I triple the rate, it'll, you'll be making more money by then. We weren't. But they sure welcomed our application. Celebrated with us at the Closing benefited not just from the Robinsons, but from thousands, tens of thousands of people across this nation, predators. But it's not just the for-profit folks either. We have seen quite a bit over the many decades, prosperity teaching, prosperity churches. If you just give everything that you have to give to the church, I mean everything, and you just believe that God will provide, give it all, God will prosper you. And people have. They have given their whole livelihood. They have turned everything into various churches and pastors flying in Gulfstream 4s and driving in Rolls Royces and mansions and churches that look more like, well, many of them are, sports arenas. And what's that? You've given all your money. You have nothing left. You're not prospering. You must not have enough faith. You must not have given enough. Dressed to impress, playing the part of righteousness and charity and hospitality, all the while financially and spiritually injuring the people they have been entrusted to serve. Jesus is saying, be careful. Be wise. Be on the lookout. The second lesson, the one that many of us are familiar with with regard to uh, the poor widow who is offering her two coins. Jesus says, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of those who were contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Now, there's some ambiguity in the Greek, and some scholars uh, argue a little bit about how to specifically translate that from Greek into English. And in some tra English translations of the Bible, it says, her whole livelihood. And some would say that if you look at the Greek, you may read it, she gave her whole life. Not necessarily her financial livelihood, but she gave her whole self. She was giving all in faith. I think about that widow 
giving everything in faith to the church. Perhaps not having enough to live on for herself. I think about the ways in which we still fall prey to scams. How many of the telephone scams we receive. I remember one where a church member, an older woman, had received a phone call from her grandson that she hadn't talked to in 10 years, and he was in jail in Montreal. She was living in Virginia. She thought he was in Florida. And he asked for $1,000 to get bailed out of jail, and she sent it to him, Western Union. The predators are still among us. The ways in which the marketing agencies tell us to buy things and to spend things on money. Spend money on things that we can't afford. And that we live in a, in a society that says we need to keep up with the Joneses. Or perhaps live a lifestyle that is beyond wisdom and beyond means. That isn't faith and that isn't wisdom. Faith and wisdom teaches us something different. Faith and wisdom teaches us to go forth. Not only believing that what we're doing makes a difference and that we will be in relationship with God and that God will love us and God will be with us and guide us, but faith and wisdom also tells us to be smart. To be sensible with that which God has entrusted to you. There is a Christian practice in, in, that has been throughout the generations called tithing. Tithing is an old English word meaning a tenth. And that is the idea of setting aside a tenth of your income, whether net or gross, and offering it to your local church, your local religious institution. And in doing that, there is wisdom behind the practice, the discipline of tithing, because what it does is it makes me sit down and consider the choices of my monthly budget. And that I put God first. And that everything else after, is, after that is being uh, arranged because of the way in which I'm living out my faith. I'm being smart and wise with the money that is entrusted to me. But I also know, too, that systematically, that there still are predators on the horizon. That is part of one of the Matthew 25 goals that we have embraced here at the church is to eradicate, to work towards the eradication of systemic poverty. We know that in our community and all around us and even, even in the houses that don't look like those are impoverished, that there are people who are struggling. And part of what we do when we give to the local church and we support the local church is that we are able to be a witness, to, to be a beacon of, of hope, a light in the darkness for all of the world to see, not just on Sunday mornings, but the whole of the week through all of that we are doing and finding ways to help people heal from being preyed upon. We have more than enough love and we have more than enough finances to share and to give. But let us do it in faith and in wisdom. Let us go forth thinking about how Christ would lead us on this day. How Christ would teach us to live in faith and in wisdom. For he says, the truth is that this poor widow gave more to the collection than all the others put together. All the others gave what they'll never miss. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. In faith and wisdom, let us go forth. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for the many ways in which you love us. We call upon you, O oh Christ, to help us to live beyond fear, 
beyond scarcity, to be as wise as serpent and as innocent as doves. We pray, God, that you would help us to rise above the cultural teachings to live beyond our means. We pray for the Spirit to help us to see that what we do here matters, that we are participating in the transformation of this world. And so this week, as we thoughtfully and prayerfully discern how we might best support the church, we pray that we would do so in faith and in wisdom. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. We come before God and we lift up our, our prayers of intercession and supplication to God in the name of Christ, believing and knowing that God will hear those prayers and will act upon them in ways that may be beyond our understanding and yet we still offer them. We bring in our hearts this day all that is within us, all the worries that we have, all the anxieties that we have, and we come before God and we lay it before God in trust. And we give our gratitude this day. We give our gratitude for the members of our fellowship committee and the many ways in which they strive to build, sustain, and maintain relationships within our church community. We lift up our concerns for Grant Kinsler, hospitalized for more than a week, battling a severe illness. And we pray for Mary, his spouse, as she cares for him. We pray for Steve Walker, who is hospitalized, recovering from gallbladder surgery and complications thereafter, and for Jamie as she cares for him. We pray for Joan Cook's son, Phil Thrasher, who has been hospitalized and recovering from multiple surgeries this week following a motorcycle accident. And we pray for Dave as he cares for her. We pray for the world. We pray for the eight young people who died and the many more who are hospitalized in Houston following a trampling at a concert this weekend. And we pray for our city. And we lift up to God our concerns about the violence and the murder rate within it. May our police chief, our sheriff, and other law enforcement officers not only be protected, but also effective in keeping our community safe. Our prayer focus this week is for women, men, children, and youth experiencing, experiencing homelessness or extreme poverty. Let us go to God in our prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, you have fashioned us in ways that are a marvel. You have instilled within us gifts of charity and love and grace and hospitality and selflessness because we are made in your image. And yet, culture would have us suppress them. Culture would have us to deny them. And we pray for your spirit to unlock them within us so that we may use them in service to those who are so desperate for an ounce of hope in this world. We know, O oh God, that you hear us as we pray. pray for the world. Destroy the shroud of death that is spread over the nations. Replace the rule of wealth and war with your realm of justice and peace, O Lord, O our God. Have mercy. Wipe away our tears.
We pray for this community. Make your home among us. Dwell within us in this place. Let it be a city of heavenly peace, a place of refuge for all. We pray for loved ones. Soothe those who are suffering. Comfort those who mourn. Let us be glad and rejoice in the gift of your salvation. O oh Lord, our God, have mercy and wipe away our tears. As you have sustained your saints through the centuries of service, keep us faithful here and now until your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Hear our prayers, O Christ, as we lift them up to you this day. Hear us as we pray to get the, the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. committee. Our God is ever faithful and provides everything that we need. Let us praise the Lord through our giving that our offerings may be acceptable to God. Jesus taught his disciples as written in Matthew chapter 6 verse 19. Do not store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them or where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart also will be. As you prayfully consider your pledge for this coming year, also consider where you can offer your talents and time. These too are treasures. For example, helping on a committee in a garden or with simple maintenance tasks around the building and grounds this helps provide a beautiful and peaceful space where we invite all to worship God. Today, gifts of money may be given at www.hopeaustin.org slash donate. We also have ushers at the end of the service with baskets available in the narthex. With joy, let us present our tithes and offerings to the Lord.
a reminder that as we take communion today, we would encourage everyone to come down the center aisle. There are two stations here. One of the servers will hand you a piece of the bread saying, the body of Christ broken for you. Your response as you take it is thanks be to God. They will, if you will cup your hand out, they will place it uh, in your hand. And then next to it is a tray with individual cups. And they will say to you, the blood of Christ shed for you, your response, thanks be to God. As you take it, drink it, and then there are receptacles at the bottom where you can put those cups. All those who put their faith in Christ are welcomed at this table. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is Christ's table. Christ is the host. And Christ invites you to come. Whatever place you may be at in life, you may be floating down the center aisle three inches off of the ground, come to the table. You may be coming full of grief and, and hardship and, 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 and tears, come to the table. You may be coming to the table with friends, with family. We come to the table from all over, from east, west, north, and south, from somewhere out in the virtual land, we are all gathered around Christ's table. So join with me now in the prayer at this table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right, good, and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give our thanks to you, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end of all creation. In the days of Isaiah, you promised to lead all the nations to your holy mountain and swallow up death forever. You have revealed the coming of a new heaven and a new earth in which every tear will be wiped from our eyes and all will feast at your heavenly banquet. And so with your saints now on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn singing. Jesus, you blessed us as never before. Thank you for the ways he taught us in word and deed. He fed us in homes and on hillsides. He healed us in body, mind, and soul and showed us that true greatness is in humility and true power is in weakness. How can we thank you for the gift he gave? When the world did its worst, he took on our death that we might be clothed in light and life. Great is the mystery of faith. Dying, he destroyed our death. Rising, he restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may become one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until all things are made new. Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, spirit of new beginnings, we praise your holy, eternal, triune name. Amen. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus sat with his disciples. He took the common loaf among them and gave thanks to God. And afterwards he broke it And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the common cup among them. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, do this in remembrance of me. And the Apostle Paul reminds us that every time that we take this bread and that we drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. For these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let the servers come forward. For those with a gluten-free preference, please come down the center to my section, and I'll have those available for you. Come, for all is ready. Thank you.
has everyone been served? Let us join together in a prayer after communion. Let us say, Eternal God, you have so greatly loved us, long sought us, and mercifully redeemed us. Give us grace that in everything we may yield ourselves, our wills, and our works, a continual thank offering to you. Amen. A reminder that we will, in our closing hymn, we will actually be singing Amazing Grace on the way out, recessing into the memorial garden. But we will offer our charge and benediction here. So let us charge each other using the words in the bulletin. Let us say, Beloved, be encouraged in the Lord and do not be led astray. Stand firm in the witness of the gospel and do good deeds all for the glory of God. Dear friends, we have more than enough to love. We have more than enough to give. Let us do so in faith and wisdom with all those resources that have been entrusted to us for the glory of God. As we go this day, know that it is our Lord Jesus the Christ who leads us on the way. He goes behind us to encourage us, above us to bless us, beneath us to support us, next to us to befriend us, and within us to empower us to live this day now and always, believing that one day we will be reunited with all the saints as we live out our saintly life together. May we go in peace. Amen. Please rise. Let us sing our final hymn together. Amen.